Hey guys, welcome back to another week of what's for dinner. This week I have three super easy and delicious meals to share with you. They're also very budget friendly, so if you are working on a tight budget, I think these meals will really work for your family. If you are new here, my name is Caitlin. I do post a new what's for dinner video every Sunday. I have a crock pot series going on right now, but I just post a lot of food related content. So if that is something that you are interested in, make sure you are subscribed and let's go ahead and get into all of these dinner ideas. For this first dinner recipe, I'm making a garlic butter salmon with some roasted cauliflower on the side. This was honestly such a good dinner recipe that my kids absolutely loved. I loved it, definitely recommend this one. So I'm starting off with one whole head of cauliflower and I'm just cutting this up into some chunks. You can do them a little bit on the bigger side, which is what I did, or of course you can make them a little bit smaller. You might just have to adjust the cooking time. So I rinsed that cauliflower off in my colander and then I'm just adding it into this bowl with a little drizzle of olive oil. I would say I used probably like a couple tablespoons. I gave that a quick toss together and then I'm adding in all of my seasonings. So I did lots of seasonings here and that's definitely the key to some good roasted cauliflower. So I did salt and pepper, I did paprika, chili powder, onion powder, garlic powder. Definitely just load this up with seasonings. You can give it a taste before you even put it in the oven, but the seasonings here were so delicious. They had so much flavor. Definitely will be making this again. This is the first time I've ever used these seasonings on cauliflower and it honestly turned out so amazing. So I wanted to start cooking the cauliflower before the salmon, so I just added this onto my baking sheet with a little bit of extra olive oil, and then I stuck this in the oven for about 10 minutes at 375 degrees, and I let this cook for about 10 minutes before adding on the salmon. Now I'm just getting my little sauce ready for the salmon, so I just melted a couple tablespoons of butter, and then I added in about an eighth a teaspoon of salt and just a little bit of pepper in there, and then I added in probably about a tablespoon of minced garlic, and I just mixed all of this together. This is just going to go right on top of the salmon, so I did go ahead and drizzle a little bit more olive oil onto the pan. I threw on my two pieces of salmon, which these were frozen by the way, you can use fresh or frozen here. And then I just took that butter glaze and spread it all across the top of the salmon. And this had such good flavor. It was also very easy to throw together very fast. And then I decided to add on a little bit of extra lemon pepper as well as some dried parsley. Now all of this went back in the oven for another 25 minutes or so just until everything was cooked through. If you want your cauliflower to be really soft, then definitely cook it a little bit longer before adding on your salmon. But we absolutely love this dinner. I definitely would recommend this one. Really, really great options and my kids really loved it too. For this next dinner, I made a pulled pork shepherd's pie. I had some leftover in the freezer, so I figured this would be a good way to use it up. So I'm starting off by just heating up a little bit of olive oil in my skillet, and then I'm adding in one onion that I had chopped up. I'm gonna saute this until it is nice and soft, and then I'll be adding in the rest of the ingredients. While the onion is sauteing, I'm getting my pulled pork ready. I had probably about a pound and a half of pulled pork here. You could also substitute for chicken and just use chicken broth instead. Then it would kind of turn out more like a pot pie with the chicken in there. But I just decided to chop up my pulled pork a little bit. I didn't want this to be super big pieces of meat in there. So I just gave this a rough chop. Now back over to my skillet, my onions are nice and soft, so I'm just going to throw in about a tablespoon of minced garlic and saute this up for about 30 seconds just until that garlic is nice and fragrant. 
Now you guys know that I love to sneak veggies in where I can, so I added in a couple cups of mixed vegetables. I just used the frozen kind. You could also do a can here if you like, but I definitely prefer the frozen ones. And then I'm also going to be adding in all of that pulled pork and just kind of let that heat up. I had thawed this in the fridge overnight, so it's still pretty cold. I'm just letting all of this warm through for a couple of minutes and while that is warming up I'm actually heading over to my island. I had boiled up some potatoes. This is going to be the mashed potatoes for on top of the shepherd's pie. So I have all of those potatoes boiled. I added in a couple tablespoons of butter, about half a cup of sour cream, and then I really like to load up my potatoes with lots of garlic powder, salt, and pepper. And then of course just a little splash of milk in there. And then I'm just going to mash these up. Now for the shepherd's pie, I don't have the exact amount here. I just kind of eyeballed it. But you can definitely add more mashed potatoes if you like it. I personally prefer a lot of mashed potatoes on mine where my husband doesn't like as many. So I did somewhere right in the middle on this day. Now for some extra creaminess and some more flavor, I added in about a cup of shredded cheese into these mashed potatoes. I decided to use a Colby and Montre Jack blend, but you can use whatever your family favorite is. And then I'm also getting my gravy ready to go over the meat mixture in the skillet. So this is about a cup of cold water with one package of brown gravy mix. Just mix this up according to the directions, but don't cook it up yet because we're actually gonna pour this over everything in the skillet. I wanted to add in some extra seasonings here, so I just did a little bit of garlic powder, some onion powder, as well as a little bit of salt and pepper. You guys know those are my absolute go-tos anytime I'm cooking. They're pretty foolproof, so I just mixed all of that in there. And then I'm gonna be adding on the gravy. Now you're gonna add this gravy right on there, and then you're just gonna let it come up to a simmer until that gravy starts to thicken. Once that meat mixture has thickened up, I'm just adding it into my 9x13 casserole dish. I didn't feel the need to spray it and it definitely didn't stick, so I don't think you have to spray your dish for this recipe. It turned out just fine. So I'm just spreading that out in an even layer. And then I'm taking all of those ooey gooey mashed potatoes and those are gonna get layered right on top of the meat mixture. And of course you want to top this with some more shredded cheese because who doesn't love cheese on shepherd's pie? And then I just threw this into a 375 degree oven for about half an hour. You just want to cook it until your cheese on top is starting to brown a little bit and everything is nice and heated through. This was a really simple dinner to make and our family really enjoyed this one and it was a great way to use up some leftovers. For this next recipe, I'm making some baked chicken tenders, and this is our all-time favorite recipe for chicken tenders in the oven. So I'm just starting off by melting down a couple tablespoons of butter into my skillet, and then I'm adding in about two cups of Italian panko breadcrumbs. Definitely use the panko kind, that's the best for this recipe, and you're actually going to saute these up until they are nice and golden brown. While the panko is sautéing, I'm getting the rest of my ingredients ready. So here I have two eggs with about four tablespoons of milk in there, and I'm just going to whisk all of this together. This is going to be for coating the chicken. Now I'm getting all of the seasonings ready for the chicken tenders. So basically I'm just mixing everything up together. This is paprika, salt, onion powder, garlic powder, 
black pepper and some cayenne in there. I'm going to have this full recipe linked down below. It will be a little bit easier for you to follow along there. I actually doubled the recipe on this night and I tweaked it just a tiny bit because my dad was there and I wanted to make it a little bit more low carb for him. So I did a little bit less panko this time and a little bit more of the parmesan. And then here into my other bowl, I'm just adding in the flour with part of that seasoning mixture. But like I said, I'm going to have the full recipe link down below so it'll be really easy for you guys to follow along with. This is what the panko breadcrumbs should look like when they come out of the skillet. They'll be really nice and golden brown and crispy. And then you're gonna add in your Parmesan cheese and the rest of that seasoning mix that you did not add to the flour. And you're just gonna mix all of this together. Now, like I said, I did a little bit less breadcrumbs and a little bit more Parmesan here. So go ahead and just follow the recipe in the description box and it is the best chicken strips recipe, I promise you. Now we are ready to actually coat up the chicken. So this is actually a very simple process. I know if you've never done it before that it could be intimidating, but it really is super easy. So you're just going to take your chicken, you're going to dip it in the flour first, then into the egg wash, and then finally into the panko mixture. And you're gonna want to get a really nice thick coating of the panko on there. It's gonna crisp up absolutely beautifully in the oven. And these will be the best baked chicken strips that you have ever had. I did cut ours a little bit thicker on this night. And you can also do this with chicken nuggets if you want smaller pieces of chicken. I've done it so many different ways, but this is definitely one of our all-time favorite recipes that we want this one at least once a month. It's a really, really, really good recipe. After I have all of my chicken tenders coated in this panko breadcrumb mixture, I'm just gonna throw them into a 390 degree oven for about 25 minutes. I did cut them a little bit on the thicker side, so they took a little bit longer in the oven this time, but the cooking time will just depend on how big your pieces of chicken are. And this is seriously one of our all-time favorite dinner recipes. Definitely try this one out. If you try it, let me know how your family likes it because it's definitely a favorite of ours. All right, friends, that is going to wrap up this week of What's for Dinner. I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you have not already. I would love to have you over on my channel for more cooking-related content with a little bit of motherhood thrown in the mix. But that is going to wrap up today's video, and I will catch you all next time. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. As a young girl, it feels we're mine. We played hide and seek for hours, raised our shadows among the pines. So offshore, playful and free, without a care.